designing women together again for the very first time. This is not just the first time on a stage. This is the first time in a room. That's true. Yeah. It's true. It's 12 12 or on a porch. Is it 12 years? Delta Burke, Dixie Carter, Annie Potts, Jean Smart, and Meshach Taylor reminisce about the characters we love. It's amazing. I didn't know that. Why do you know all the capitals? Because I love knowledge. In fact, I yearn for it. <laughs> These things are power. Just so you will know. And your children will someday know is the night the lights went out in Georgia. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Well, I never knew that I looked that good in a dress before Linda. <laughs> it's a special night as the stars share behind-the-scenes stories. You and I started getting tight. And we wound up in a suite together? Yeah. And life off camera. We have to talk about when Delta was crazy. Plus, the men of Designing Women. I had taken one look at those blue eyes and just, I was gone. You had to be strong with this woman and take her on. Would you mind if you just laid on top of me for a moment? You did not do that. What? I did. He was our first conquest. Excuse me, Richard. Do you have a girlfriend? She wants to know you're married. <laughs> If you mess with her, I'm going to kill you. <laughs> it's a celebration of sisterhood with laughs, tears, and priceless memories on the Designing Women Reunion. and gentlemen, Mr. Meshack Taylor. Thank you. On September 29th, 1986, a new television show came on the air. Up until then, viewers were used to seeing female characters on TV as wives and mothers, sexy sirens and second bananas. <laughs> They had no idea what was about to hit them. It was called Designing Women. Now, don't be fooled by this old-fashioned, genteel port set. This set is an homage to the southern heritage of these designing women. However, these were never the kind of women who sat around fanning themselves. They were controversial, audacious, sharp, outspoken, sexy, Stubborn, fascinating, exasperating, manipulative, provocative, <laughs> with big hearts, big dreams, and oh yeah, big mouths. This just makes me furious. You know, when men use women's liberation as an excuse not to kill bugs for you. Oh, I just hate that. I don't care what anybody says, I think the man should have to kill the bug. <laughs> I don't think I can add anything to that. Allow me to introduce myself, Ray Don Simpson. Well, there's no need for introductions, Ray Don. We know who you are. You do? Of course. You're the guy who's always, wherever women gather or try to be alone. You want to eat with us when we're dining in hotels. You want to know if the book we're reading is any good or if you can keep us company on the plane. And I want to thank you, Ray Don, on behalf of all the women in the world for your unfailing attention and concern. But read my lips and remember, as hard as it is to believe, sometimes we like talking just to each other, and sometimes we like just being alone. That reminds me of that story about the southern woman who goes to this real la -da, da cocktail party in New York City. She turns to a northern woman and she says, where y'all from? And the northern woman looks at her and says, we're from where we don't end our sentences with a preposition. So the southern woman looks at her and says, oh, well then, where y'all from, bitch? <laughs> Well, I'll tell you what really kills me is that stuff that Freud said about us wanting what men have. Now, I mean, is that the most absurd thing you ever heard of? I mean, like, we're going to walk up to some guy and go, 
Yeah, boy, I sure would like to have me one of those. Yes. If I just had me one of those, I would be in business. For seven years, I was Anthony Bouvier, the delivery man at the design firm called Sugar Bakers. I worked for Julia Sugar Baker, Suzanne Sugar Baker, Mary Jo Shively, and Charlene Steelfield. And it was quite a ride. We made each other laugh every week. But since the end of the show, the original cast has never been together on the same stage again. Until now. <laughs> It is truly my pleasure to bring out the four amazing actresses who brought these ladies to life. Please welcome Delta Burke, Dixie Carter, Annie Potts, and Jean Smart, the designing winner. What I remember so strongly was the Monday read-throughs. Now, we would shoot the show on Friday, and Monday morning we'd walk in, we'd get our coffee, we'd sit down and read the brand new script. And we never knew what was coming up next because it all started with one amazing mind. The woman who created the characters and the situations and the lines we love. The girl who really was from Poplar Bluff, Missouri, <laughs> who was as opinionated as Julia, as curious as Mary Jo, as sweet as Charlene, and as outrageous as Suzanne. <laughs> Miss Linda Bloodworth. <laughs> Linda. Hello. How you doing? Welcome. Oh, this to is everyone. fantastic. It feels great to see everybody up here together again. It's just amazing. And on a porch. Now, where'd you find these ladies? Well, I don't think I found them. Okay. They, <laughs> they sort of found us. Um, they, uh, Dixie and Delta. We were doing a show called Filthy Rich. At, thank you. I love that show. <laughs> they came in on a casting call to play Kathleen Beck and the character of Kathleen Beck and the character. Of Carlotta, Carlotta Beck. Carlotta. And Dixie, yeah. Yes, and Dixie originally came in for... Uh, for Bootsy. Well, she draped herself <laughs> over all the furniture, <laughs> and she sang and danced and pranced around. And so we fell in love with her, and then this one came in, and she was Miss Florida. I'd never met a beauty queen who had so much self-awareness and, and was so unashamed of her quest for the crown. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Life is better when the crown. <laughs> and she openly said, I'm not interested in being an actress, I want to be a movie star, <laughs> which, which has changed. That's changed now. But, so we had these two, and then we had done another series with the actor Robert Wagner, mm. and our wonderful casting director, Fran Bascom, came on, and we remembered these two incredibly bold, audacious, sort of Thelma and Louise types who had appeared on this series. They were diamond thieves. And they were in jail together. And they were just hilarious. <laughs> then we have to talk a little about how we got this one. Uh. He is the man who came for Thanksgiving dinner. <laughs> he showed up for Thanksgiving and stayed for seven years. They couldn't make me leave. Uh, but unlike most company that you want to leave, we're so glad, Meshach, that you stayed. Oh, thank you. Um, the part was originally written, I think, for a short white guy. That's right. And um, I think you said that night, Meshach, we told you that you, we wanted you to be a regular. Yes, you did. Uh, that's truly that a Hollywood story. That was a Hollywood story. moment. And finally, we have to acknowledge someone who is so, so dear to us. Um, she goes all the way back to one of my favorite movies, which is To Kill a Mockingbird. She came to us and graced 47 episodes of Designing Women with her achingly funny, touching talent. 
and I want her to stand now because we love her so much, and she came here today just to be with us. The fabulous, lovable, incomparable fruitcake, Alice Ghostly. <laughs> Next, the designing women dish about life and love. I found out that day that I was pregnant. And later, the cast's favorite co-star makes a special appearance. What does that mean? <laughs> Someone left the cake out in the room. Oh, yeah.